Hello friends, welcome to 12 Days in the Disciplines. And I'm joined today by my daughter Kristen for this session on worship. I thought it would be good to get the point of view of a preteen because as somebody who is not always uh, familiar with everything that happens in a worship service, Kristen could probably give us some insights that we might miss. So talk to me about when you first started coming to church or you first remember coming to church and you wanted to worship, how did it feel worshiping with the adults? And you can be honest, the people out there are just fine with your honesty. Uh, I kind of felt nervous at first because I guess I felt that everybody would be staring at me and I felt like I wouldn't fit in, especially since I was smaller and it's not really like people were just thinking that I would be silly or like I would make fun of it or something. So I didn't really want to do it because I felt embarrassed. So what helped you in terms of learning to worship with people? Actually, it was KidsNet because when I was at KidsNet, I saw, I just felt God so much and I saw another boy doing it too and he actually raised his hands. So I felt comfortable with doing it because when I see other kids, I feel like I'm not alone in this and I don't have to be afraid. Mm. So is it fair to say that gathering with other people worship to worship helps us to worship? Uh, yeah. And it doesn't really have to be your age, it's just I'm comfortable with my age group with worshiping with them, but anybody can be comfortable with anyone. So tell me about your favorite experience in church ever. My favorite experience in church is probably when I first got up on stage and I started singing because I was nervous, but people actually clapped and sang along with me, so I felt that I was doing a good job. Awesome. All right, well, if there's one, one thing that people out there uh, you wanted to tell them about worship, what would you tell them? Uh, I would probably tell them that it's okay to meet God and you don't have to be too good about it right away because you're not really familiar with the, well, the feeling of it since I definitely wasn't when I first got filled with the experience, but you get used to it eventually. So fill with the experience. Tell me about that. What does it feel like when you feel God? Uh, well, I kind of just feel free. Like, I don't know. I don't have to have stress anymore. My heart kind of rounds up and I just feel like I can loosen up and just close my eyes and sing out to him. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today, Kristen. Thank you for letting me stay. So are you going to be a worship leader in the future? Yes. <laughs> it was so nice having Kristen to join us today. I'll be honest with you, I knew this was going to be a difficult session to do a practice on corporate worship in a time when we're not allowed actually to gather together and to and to worship the way that we would in church. So me and Kristen actually had a little worship set uh, before this happened and I'm going to share a little bit of that with you after the session today. If you want to stick around, Kristen is going to perform a song for you and lead us in some worship. So what does Foster have to say about corporate worship? He says that to worship is to experience reality to touch life. It is to know, to feel, to experience the resurrected Christ in the midst of the gathered community. He says we can use all the right techniques and methods. We can have the best possible liturgy, but we've not yet worshiped the Lord until spirit touches spirit. And I think there he's riffing on Jesus's uh, discussion with the woman at the well, where he tells her that the true worshipers are gonna worship in spirit and in truth. Now, as he said, the scriptures don't have a lot to say about the things that we need to do when we gather. And there are true expressions of worship happening in very different ways in churches all across Newfoundland and all around the world. We sing different songs. Some of us use written prayers. Some of us uh, use spontaneous oral prayer. Some of us have a booklet. And in Pentecostal circles especially, our, our worship is a little bit more free form, more about gathering to sing and then gathering to listen around the word and then to respond to the word. But the scriptures do have something to say about the fact that we should be gathering together and some of the things we definitely should be doing when we gather. One of those passages is Ephesians chapter five, and it's significant that this is right after Paul talks about the gifts that God has given to the church, the apostles, prophets, the evangelists, and the pastor teachers. And then he says this, he says, be very careful how then you live, not as unwise, but wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing and making music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, as Kristen pointed out, there's something about gathering that actually enhances our own experience of worship. It's different than a private moment of worship when it's just you and God, or maybe you're listening to a worship track uh, on Spotify or on iTunes, or if you're like me, uh, sitting at the piano or playing your guitar. At the last church I was at, uh, there was a parishioner whose name was Christina, and she wouldn't mind me telling this story. But when she was in the, in the gathering, it's like it added a different level of energy. And when she moved away, uh, we experienced her loss profoundly. Even days when she couldn't make it to worship, we knew that Sunday was going to be a tricky Sunday as a worship team because Christina wasn't there. That was just the kind of gift that she brought to the church. And this is the experience that corporate worship is supposed to have, that each of us aren't just supposed to be come to be entertained or to listen to the worship leader uh, and hope they play our favorite songs, but we're all supposed to bring something to worship with us. We all have different uh, experiences that we've carried from the week. We all have different spiritual gifts. And as I pointed out before, we all have different dispositions. And there's no right or wrong personality type in worship. Every church needs its introverts, its extroverts, its kind of omniverts. And every church needs um, a mix of people who like to sing, or who like to pray, or who like to speak, or who like to serve. It takes literally the whole body to make up the church. So during this COVID crisis, how are you gathering? This is a really important question for us because obviously when we're tuning in online, it's a bit of a different experience. For my family, that means waking up a little bit earlier on Sunday morning than we'd like to and gathering and preparing for the day and just uh, sitting around together and watching and tuning in. And in a lot of cases, just having little interactions with your pastor during the service or whoever's tracking with them can help to again create that community that's essential to the church. I love that my, my church here in Paradise actually solicits songs and little stories and little video snippets from the congregation because it gives us a sense of being gathered. There are some things that we can do also in preparation for worship uh, when we are gathering together. Foster talks a lot about how if we practice the presence of God throughout the week, it becomes more natural and life-giving for us in that corporate gathering and we have more to bring to the body when we're coming together for worship. Uh, if you missed the session on prayer, it might be good to do, just go back and do a little recap of that to know what I'm talking about. Foster says, in praise we see how totally the emotions need to be brought into the act of worship. Worship that is solely cerebral is an aberration. He says, feelings are a legitimate part of the human personality and should be employed in worship. To make such a statement doesn't mean that our worship should do violence to our rational faculties, but it does mean that our ra rational faculties alone are inadequate. As Paul counsels, we're to pray with the spirit and pray with the mind, sing with the spirit and sing with the mind. That is one reason for the spiritual gift of tongues. It helps us to move beyond mere rational worship into a more inward communion with the Father. Our inward mind may not know what's being said, but our inward spirit understands. Spirit touches spirit. Now, when I was growing up, my very first formative experience with God was a worship experience. I'll never forget uh, that night in Camp Ashante when I first experienced the presence of God sitting around with a group of youth uh, on plastic camp chairs. And for the first time in my life, my emotions engaged with God. And it's like I could actually feel him surrounding me. Now, as great as this was as a formative experience, and that night I gave my life to Christ, this also created kind of a worship dependency in my life. And this became the experience that I would seek after not only when I was in church or in youth group, but in my private devotion as well. The experience of God in my emotions became the be all. And there were certain songs that I liked, uh, some of them because they stirred my emotions. And I became somewhat of a worship junkie. I'll never forget the year that uh, Matt Redman released the song, The Heart of Worship. I don't know if you remember it or if you've heard it before, but his church was going through so, sort of the same kind of experience. The, whole idea of platform worship was really being perfected and the Christian music industry was going strong. And he felt like his church needed to actually take a break from having corporate singing at all so that they could all just focus on coming and bringing their gifts to God. So I'm looking forward to hearing how your experience with uh, practicing worship goes this week and how you're gathering with your community. I, I'm just so amazed and, and blown away by what the churches across our province are doing right now during this crisis both in creating a gathering experience and also in serving the community. So if you're pastoring through that or you're helping to lead through that or um, being a part of the body through that, thank you for the role that you're playing in that.
Until next time, grace and peace.